Hello and welcome to UC Today. I'm Tom Wright and I'm delighted to be joined by Mike from Dialpad. How's it going, Mike? Tom, great to be with you. How's the UK today? Yeah, very good, very good. It's great to have you. Uh, we're going to be talking about the channel today. And I uh, just wonder if you could start by talking through some of the biggest trends and challenges that you're seeing impact your channel partners at the moment. Yeah, uh, so number one, uh, happy to be with you. Uh, happy to take this time. Um, it's an interesting time right now for partners. If you think about the uh, transformation of AI and how it's impacting everybody's daily lives, if you're a partner, um, you know, what I think one of the biggest challenges is right now is that pace of change. And how do you determine, like, what is vaporware, what's real, um, you know, what's the best AI out there to take to your customers? And so I think that's a real big topic right now uh, from the partner side is trying to determine what the best route to market is and what to bring in front of your customers. And then in addition to that, um, it's all the usual stuff that partners are working with is that the, uh, the transformation of cloud and um, what we're seeing specifically in our space and, and where we compete is, do you go standalone business communication solution, say just CCAS by itself? Do you go with a platform, a bundle, a UCAS, CCAS offering, or do you go with like say UCAS by itself? So it's an interesting time right now. There's lots of options for customers and uh, I would argue a partner's job is to bring best of breed in front of their customers. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned AI there. I don't know if you've been out and about with them recently. We, we certainly have at UC today, and there's a lot of AI, there's a lot of noise. It's just, um, it must be tricky for partners to kind of cut through and work out what it is that's going to be best for them and ultimately best for their customers. Yeah, so, you know, if we take specifically Gen AI, if you see in the space right now, it's really impacting really everybody. And I think a partner's job is to determine, um, you know, is it ChatGPT? Is it Google Vertex? Is it standalone? Uh, and there's a lot of options out there that they have to then bring to the table to bring in front of their customers. And I think it really depends on the use case. Are you looking for real time? Are you looking for more summarization? There's lots of different options, uh, the way AI is now impacting specifically business communications. Um, if you're talking in the CCAS world, is agent productivity, um, is it a better customer experience? All those kind of weigh in. And I would always say follow the use case is probably the best uh, answer for partners trying to determine what's the right product for their for their customers. Yeah. Okay. And um, just moving on, we're going to be talking a bit about your your European channel development um, today. But I think it might be interesting actually just to just to see if you're seeing any differences sort of in the US channel and, and the European channel. It might be uh, interesting for someone in your position who who works in both just to kind of talk through the different dynamics you're seeing there. Yeah. In broad strokes, you know, the overall programs are similar, but it's always local and it's always differences in local markets. Um, you know, for us specifically, we're investing heavily in our EMEA and UK presence. Um, we brought over our best and brightest uh, over to London to head up our, our program out of EMEA. A uh, gentleman is Irish. His name is Niall. He was out in Australia and he did a great job for us there. And then we uh, relocated him to London to help us build that up. Um, we also uh, have invested heavily and we hired a no, new local resource uh, for our program. So um, there are certainly differences. I think some of the, um, the customers, um, they operate at a different pace in different areas. Um, but the same challenges that a customer in London has is the same challenges they have you know, globally or anywhere in India. Okay, so let's look a bit more in the European channel then. Why now? What's the, the driving force behind this and how are things going so far? So uh, we've always been channel first uh, in London. That's how we started. We had a, a, an office it's still in Soho and that's how we started our practice. It was always channel first. Um, and then we've just expanded it over the years. And so um, we have a pretty broad breadth of partnerships. Um, we have you know big national solution providers, companies like Softcat, CDW, um, who helps take us out to market. Um, we have MSPs, uh, managed services providers. So, you know, partners who are managing the entire tech ecosystem for their customers and they're providing that extra value of service like um, support out. Um, we have big integrators, you know, folks that are doing that app integration work. Um, for us specifically, Dialpad is a Google spin out. And so we have a, a heavy, uh, we run on GCP and we have a, a real strong partnership with Google. And so in our case, we also have the Google ecosystem. So we have partnerships 
uh, who work with Google and GCP, um, who are now taking this out to market. So we have a really broad ecosystem, and we're just going to continue to invest in that. About half of our revenues uh, in uh, EMEA come from our partners, and we only see that going to increase. And you mentioned a few different types of partner there. I wonder if it's worth just going into some of the the particular challenges or trends you're seeing in each of those, I suppose, categories, because they obviously work with you because it works for them, but you've got a, a huge range, I suppose, of size of partner there going up to you know, from the smallest to the biggest. Yeah, so if you're, say, a Google partner, um, in those cases, you're looking at what's the best um, CCAS solution to take to your customers. And so in some cases, um, they have their own... Google has a, a kind of a sliver of an offering. So if you're trying to do build your own kind of, you know, bespoke offering, there, that is a solution. But if you're looking for an all-in-one uh, CCAS solution um, that has the AI already built in, then in many cases, um, you know, a Google partner is bringing Dialpad in. Um, if you're an MSP, um, Dialpad can scale from the SMB all the way up to the very large enterprise. And so if you're an MSP, in many cases working with SMB customers, um, you know, you look at Dialpad because it's a way to get that deployment done fairly quickly with a, a great end user experience and a, not a hard transition from on-prem to the cloud. So we see a lot of MSPs, um, you know, leaning in with us as well. And then with the advent of AI, um, we're seeing a lot more um, ISV app integrators uh, reaching out to us as they see a, a really good offering to bring together how, like say, Gen AI interacts with Salesforce, and uh, that's those are some pretty compelling use cases that you know we're starting to see now across the board as well. Yeah, great. And then just sort of looking at the the decision, I suppose some channel partners have to to make. You mentioned, or we both mentioned, there's a lot of noise out there, a lot of competition. What steps are you taking to really differentiate yourself um, for your channel partners? Yeah, I, I think a lot of it comes down to enablement. It's a lot of time and effort, and um, I think. If you're a trusted advisor, if you're a partner out there in this new world, you want to become that subject matter expert. And um, you know how you're going to do that is really kind of doing the work in, around the enablement to determine um, who is the right fit. Now, we try to make it as easy as possible for our partners to help them determine um, when dial pad versus another solution. And um, we have all, you know, like a lot of programs, we have heavy investment in enablement. So we have a deep dive into the tech and then we have local channel managers and SEs to support them as well. Um, how we differentiate uh, is that we feel we're able to be, uh, we've been in the AI category for five years. We acquired a company called Talk IQ back in 2017, 2018, sorry. And um, that's been an integrated and part of our go-to-market and our product for five years. And so we have five years of AI data uh, we literally have six billion minutes of capturing voice and transitioning that uh, into actual data. And so we're able to take that and combine it with the Vertex AI and the, the you know, Gen AI LLMs to, to bring the best of both uh, to our customers. And so that's how we differentiate is that we're not new to the AI game. We've been doing it for five years and the advent of the new Gen AI tools are just enabling us to go even faster. Yeah, I think it's going to be so important in that generative AI um, you know, is ready and then moving forward. But I just I wonder, are you seeing any um, sort of particular interest from types of channel partners who like, are ready for this now? Is it with the big guys or the small ones? Are you seeing any differences in adoption among different partners? Yeah, it's again, I always go back to the use case, right? So if you have partners who specialize in CCAS, um, they're seeing Gen AI as a way to really enhance the age of productivity. And our own solution, we would argue, gets faster time to resolution, um, more productive agents. They're able to get through um, the resolution um, of what's happening in real time much faster. Um, so if you're seeing somebody who specializes in CCAS, they're really leaning in. Um, in some cases, if you're just looking at a UCAS solution where you want to have a summary of every single conversation, think about this song. The conversation that me and you just had, let's say it was on a regular phone call, um, you can now summarize that. And you have a record of that forever. So you can go back and look at, hey, we talked two years ago. What was that about? You do a search and a one-to-one -one phone call was there. Um, that's what Dalpac can bring to market on that side. So it really depends on the use case. If they have need more heavy CCAS, um, we can fit that solution. If you need a more just kind of basic UCAS with very cool summarization built in, uh, we can do that as well. 
And I wanted to ask you about the the types or the profiles of partners that you work well with. I think, to be fair, we have covered that it's a, it's a real wide range, but are there any types or profiles of partners who you'd go, you know, you need to come and speak to us now? Yeah, I mean, again, it's, um, and I know I touched on it earlier, you got big, broad partners who bring, you know, help us go to market in a very broad way, big companies like a, a CDW, like a SoftCat. Um, you have app integrators who specialize in Salesforce, who specialize in HubSpot, and they're then able to come out and bring the AI and the business communication solution to their customers, bringing the best of both, right? Bringing a, a latest CRM with the latest business generate, uh, sorry, um, uh, business uh, communications platform. Um, and then you have the MSPs, which are very valuable. I mean, if you think about an MSP, if you look at most businesses or small business, right? What is it? 90%. Many of them are working with a trusted advisor, working with somebody to help them stay on top of everything. And in those, you know, and MSPs are extremely valuable. In our case, uh, we have a program that enables them to do their own deployments, enables them to do their own support if that's what they want a part of their business model. And so it really has a, a broad breadth where you have MSPs, you have the big guys, and then you have like the app integrators who are specialized subject matter experts. So there's a huge range of you know, potential channel partners and I get the feeling things are moving really quick for you, but I've got one final question um, to put you on the spot a little bit. I wonder if you sure. could just talk through how you think your channel strategy is going to evolve over the next few months and maybe give us an idea of where you'd like to be if we're having this conversation again in six months' time, which you know, I hope we can. Yeah, if I have a crystal ball, how it's going to evolve, it's from where it's going, and I, I know we've talked about AI over and over, and it's a buzzword, and people probably might start to get tired of it. We totally get that. I just think it's such a transformational tech that's happening once in a generation that this is, is going to be where we are going to evolve. So I think most of our enablement, most of our events, most of our sales engineers support that we bring to bear, it's all going to be very focused on that, enabling partners to really best determine um, why Dialpad versus some of the other solutions out there. So I just see us evolving more and more towards that. Even from, if you think about the messaging that we do by vertical, you know, if you're in healthcare, this is how the A applies to the, this use case. If you're in recruiting, here's how it applies. If you're in retail, kind of go down the line. Um, so I, I think this is gonna be more and more specific around the use cases of AI and how it can impact, you know, business outcomes. Mike, it's been great talking to you. Um, I hope you can speak again as this uh, channel of strategy develops. But in the meantime, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and a share on social media. And we'll see you next time.